Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum number of operations to sort a binary tree by level. It's similar to another tree question we kind of just solved in that levels of the tree are going to be important. So already I'm kind of thinking along the lines of BFS and I haven't even read the problem yet. So just to give you my train of thought. So idea is we're given the root of a binary tree and all the values are unique. Now, the main reason that that's important, I guess I'll get into it in a second, but what we want to do here is make sure that every level of the tree is sorted. So when you look at the first level, it's already sorted. Made it a little bit bigger over here, but this is already sorted. Second level though, it looks like it's not. We could swap them. We could put the three over here and the four over here if we want it to be sorted. This level is also not sorted. How would it look if it was sorted? Well, the five is over here, six is here, seven is here, and eight is here. It's not necessarily guaranteed that they will be contiguous. Like we could have had a gap somewhere. Maybe this could have been like 18. Uh, but now to get into the distinct values thing, what we want to do is actually count the number of operations it's going to take to achieve this, to achieve this assorted level and this sorted level and every sorted level. So how can we do that? Well, we're only allowed one operation, which is to swap two values. So that's actually pretty simple. And we actually want to count the minimum number of operations to do that. Now we're starting to think, well, how exactly are we going to do that? Because first of all, this is a tree. It's going to be kind of hard to do that. I mean, from this guy's perspective, yeah, we could look at the two children. But what about when we're talking about cousins like this over here and here? It's going to be kind of hard to sort those. So the easiest thing to do is just convert each level into an array. So not that crazy. BFS, very standard algorithm. Use that to collect every level into an array, and then the problem becomes pretty simple. Now we're solving a different problem. If I give you an array that looks like uh, this, uh, suppose it's 7, 6, 8, and 5, but I want the array to actually look like this, 5, 6, 7, and eight and knowing that we could pick any two values even if they're cousins or you know something else second cousins we can still swap any two given values on the same level so now if i tell you that how would you solve this problem over here because after you solve that you're actually done with everything Finally, to get back to what I was saying a second ago, I think the unique values thing is going to be a little bit helpful for this part, because if we had duplicates, it would make it a little bit harder to reason about. Hopefully it'll make more sense in a couple minutes, but this is the approach that we can take to solve this sub problem over here. What we want is to know the minimum number of operations. So it's not necessarily like we're running a sorting algorithm. It's not like we're running merge sort and then doing this like, OK, I'm going to perform a swap between these two. OK, that's that's pretty good, right? We could turn this into six and seven. Yeah, we could turn this into five and eight and then we could merge these two together like merge sort. But that's not minimizing the number of operations. How do we minimize the number of operations? Well, we take a greedy approach. Let me show you what I mean. And I think at this point, we can probably uh, get rid of this thing over here. This is the approach we're going to take. Remember, this is the original. This is the intended array. Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to look at this value over here. It should be a 5. How do I know it should be a five? Well, I must have this array somewhere. How do I have this array? Well, the easiest way is to just sort this array. So yeah, we're gonna actually run a standard built-in sort method, and that will take n log n time for each level in the tree. But then we can say it should be a five in this position, but it's not. So, okay, so for this particular position, we do have to perform a swap. The shortest path to putting five here is just to do the swap with five, put five over there. And then we can say that, OK, up until this point, up until this point, everything is sorted so far. All of these numbers are the ones that are not sorted. So let me just first high level show you how it would work and then I'll get into the minor details. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to look here. OK, it should be a five. It's not perform the swap. So I put five over here and then seven ends up over here. Now we can say that guaranteed that up until this point array is sorted. Look at this element it should be a six. It looks like it is a six. OK, so didn't have to do anything there. 
So now we can say that up until this point, the array is sorted. Now I look here, it's an eight. It should be a seven. So I have to perform a swap with seven. Seven's not over there anymore, so we'll have to keep track of that. Seven is over here now. So I do the swap. I put seven here, and then I put eight over here. At this point, we can say that, okay, we're sorted all the way up until here. And now we're gonna be at the last element. It's an eight. It should be an eight. Okay, we're done. It looks like we only performed two swaps for this level. Okay, now that looked really, really easy, didn't it? But I bet if you were to start coding it up right now, you might have some challenges with it because there are some minor details that I kind of glossed over. First of all, let's assume that yes, we have this, this is nums and this is sorted nums. I have a pointer, I have my index here. So I know the value I'm looking at and I know the intended value in sorted nums as well. So since they are different, since they are not equal, I need to do a swap. Five is the one that's supposed to be here, but I'm not taking five from this array. I'm taking five from the original array. Well, where is five? I have no idea. It could be over here, sure, but it could also be over here. It could have been over here too. So how do I know? Well, the easiest thing to do is just to uh, scan over the input just a single time, do a little bit of pre-processing before we even get into this algorithm that I'm describing uh, with the swaps and stuff. We're going to do some pre-processing and build a hash map. Yes, hash map jutsu is usually the answer. We are going to map every value in nums. We're going to map every n value to the index of that value. So we will know that five is at index three. Currently, we are at index zero. So I'm going to perform the swap between those two indices. Fantastic. Okay, now there's still one little error you might have, which is this. So now I have five over here, I have seven over here. Once I get here, I wanna do the swap because it should be a seven. So I get the index of seven. Well, if I don't update my hash map, seven, it was started over here. Seven was at index zero. So just remember that after you do perform a swap, you'll need to update the hash map as well like the mapping of the value to the index. You don't necessarily have to update both because we put five over here and we put seven over here, but we already know that we're never really gonna need that five again. So you don't necessarily need to say that five is actually at index zero now. I'm gonna do it anyway because it doesn't matter, but you could skip that step. Anyway, this is just a minor detail. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's not a big deal. But that's more or less how this problem works. I don't think I'm missing anything. I guess we could get into the time complexity. Let's say we have a complete binary tree. So with complete binary trees, we could have something like this in the worst case. So, you know, the level will double every time. So the max level in the tree in the worst case would be n divided by two. Half the elements could be in the bottom level of the tree. And if we were to sort that, so n over two is the amount of elements that we're gonna have to sort. So it's basically like n over two log n over two, which is proportional just to n log n. So something like that. Now you might say, well, we're not only sorting this level over here, are we? I mean, we're also gonna sort this, which is n over four, and this, which is n over eight, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the part where many people just don't care about it. I find it kind of interesting. Well, this is actually a math thing. One over two plus one over four plus one over eight. Eventually it converges to one. Um, think about it this way. Let's say I give you a circle and I say, well, cut that circle in half and give me it, right? I give you half that circle. Okay, well, I got half the circle left. Well, cut that in half and give me that too. Okay, well, cut that in half and give me it too. It'll never reach zero, but it'll converge at zero. Or in other words, what we've taken will converge to one. The remaining part will converge to zero. Anyways, I think that's enough to say that the time complexity is n log n, because it's like we're saying we're gonna add up a bunch of terms like this thing divided by two plus it divided by four, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get into the uh, code now. I said earlier in the video, this was gonna be a BFS problem. And I mainly just talked about the sorting aspect of this problem because BFS is a very standard algorithm if you're not familiar with it. I'll go over the high level. Usually we use a queue, but if you want a more in-depth explanation, I would check out a neat code IO. The DSA for beginners course should cover it pretty well. So we're gonna start with a queue. And then while the queue is non-empty, at every point we're going to process each level by level in the tree. We want to take all the nodes in that current level and get the values of them and collect them into an array. And then, 
we're going to go. Well, this is the part where I'm actually doing that. So right now I'm going to go through the queue, whatever is inside of the queue right now. This is like taking a snapshot of the queue. So this is as if I'm doing this size equal that and then I'm passing size into here because range is a function in this loop. We're going to be adding nodes to the queue. So I just don't want you to be confused about that. Um, and then inside of here, we can say the node is queue.pop left and let's just get the value of it and append it to the level. And if the nodes left value exists, then we will add that to the queue, node.append left, same thing with right, so queue.append node.right. And after we're done with that, you see how we kind of just broke it down into a sub problem. What we're trying to do now with this level is count the number of swaps. So now that we've collected them into there, we can uh, write a helper function. So I'll do something like this. I'll call it count swaps, passing in the level and whatever this returns, I'll add it to some variable, which I'm gonna call the result. Result is equal to zero here. And down here, I'll just return the result. So now we're almost done. We just gotta count the swaps. I'll write a helper function up here for that. Boom, boom, boom. And I'll pass in nums to do that. Well, at least I'll call it nums in this function. We have a variable, which I won't call the result for one time in my life. I'll call it swaps. That's what we're gonna return. What we wanna do is iterate over the input array. Let's say for i in range length of nums. We wanna know is the value at index i the intended value? Well, we gotta get the sorted nums for that. So I'm gonna create a copy of nums, which I'm gonna call sorted nums. Thankfully, the sorted function, this, creates a new copy of this array. It won't sort it in place, and then it'll return that. Then we'll get that here. So now I can say with an if statement, if this is not equal to sorted nums, then we can increment the number of swaps. But the next part is the part that is not that complicated, but it's kind of annoying to code up. Remember, now we actually have to perform the swap. So something like this, this is what I want to do. I wanna say nums of i, nums of j is equal to this, nums of j and nums of i. We perform the swap, but it's not that simple because we don't know the intended index or, or the J value because this is the value we actually want to be here, but we don't know where that value is in this array. So before here, we do some pre-processing index map is gonna be equal here. I'm doing dictionary comprehension. By the way, if you're not familiar with these tips and tricks, I have a Python for coding interviews course on NeatCode.io. So here I'm gonna say uh, for I and in enumerate nums, I'm going to map the number to the index. And it has to be in the original array. That's where we want the mapping from, not the sorted num. So N maps to I, fantastic. So now here to get the, the J value, it's so simple. It's just this index map of the number here, this number that we actually wanted over here, sorted nums of I is equal, or rather J is equal to that. And then we perform the swap. And assuming I don't have any mistakes, I think the only thing left for us to do is actually uh, update this map because now that we've performed the swap, like the mapping may not be accurate anymore. So we can say index map of nums of i is actually now this and also just copy this and put some j's here. And so now if I run this, it should work, I hope. Let me uh, scroll down just to show you the rest of the final code. And yes, thankfully it does work and it's pretty efficient. I do wanna lastly mention though, that this is the element that we know is now in the correct position. So the minor detail I was talking about is that actually we don't need to update the mapping of that because we'll never uh, get it here. So we only really needed this part. Um, so I'll get rid of that. And you can see after running it, it still works. And I don't think that was the reason for the 28% improvement. I think leak code is just random. But if you found this helpful, definitely like and subscribe, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.